everyone, welcome to Mosaic House Online Worship. I am thankful that you are here. I am thankful that you think I'm here. But most of all, let us glorify our King, yes, Jesus Christ. And that's why even though this is a very helpful tool, instrument, technology, I'm talking about on online, it is the will of the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, our King, that you join Him in a local church for belonging and for mission. So may I encourage you in the Holy Spirit that you find a local church. Let's get started. We're kicking off a brand new series, but here is a first introduction. Take a look at this picture. This is the most expensive, one of the most expensive crown jewels in the world. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. The Peace Center gem is known as the Koinur. It's Persian, which, which means mountain of light. Centuries ago, this, this diamond, which weighs over 21 grams, and you know how many, the size of the diamond is whopping 20, no, excuse me, 105 carats. Guess what it is uh, valued at. Take a number, take a number, take a high number. This diamond is worth, this crown is worth, check this out, $591 million. It is one of the most treasured treasures in the world. Now, let's do a mental exercise, shall we? What if a deal of the century is offered to you? What if the owner, which is the British government, the royal family, what if they came to you and said, we will sell this crown jewel for everything you have? Would you do it? Well, let's take into account. So would you be willing to sell your house? Oh yeah, you better believe it. Would you be willing to clean out your savings account? Oh, savings account? Oh yeah, you better believe it. Would you say, say to your child, hey, son, hey, daughter, open up your piggy banks. You're going to gather every penny and you're going to sell everything you have. And let's suppose you come up with, say, what about $900,000, okay? So that's your worth. Everything you have is about $900,000. A lot of money, a lot of money. Would you take the deal? Would you receive the offer? Would you trade in your $900,000 for a $500,000? $91 million treasure. You bet you would. You will be a fool not to. Am I right? Of course. Any logical, common sense per, per person would make the trade. Now, why am I talking about this? All this talk about treasure and trading, selling everything. Well, hence we're kicking off a brand new series called Heaven is Like Da Da Da. Discovering Jesus parables. We're going to go through the book of Matthew, and then we're going to take about nine parables of Jesus Christ. And in each of these parables, Jesus says this, same opening, same, op same opening line. The kingdom of heaven is like. And that's what we're going to do today, starting today. Now, before I read Matthew 13, what a parables. Not everyone knows what a parable is. Parables are short stories used by rabbis in Jesus' day. Those are short stories that the rabbis used as a teaching technique to refer, to point to, using the everyday life common things to point and to reference things of heaven. Got it? So, Come with me. Let's go to Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 44. Very, very short reading, just two verses. And in them are two parables. And they are teaching about the same truth, what heaven is like. Would you like to find out what heaven is like? Let's go. Come with me. Hear the word of the Lord. 
The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the heaven is the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Our Lord Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, would you put words in my mouth? I have wrestled with the sermon preparations. I have prayed before you on my knees. And now, oh Lord, use the words of your servant, this sinful man, to display the glory of your kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Two parables, same truth. The first one, kingdom of heaven is like what? Treasure hidden in a field. A man found it, and in his joy, he hides it again, and then he goes, sells everything he has, and he buys the field. Um, so 2,000 years ago, the most common way for people to hide their treasures or expensive items, gold, silver, very, very expensive stuff, precious stuff, your treasures, what, what they would have done was, you got it, they would dig them under the ground. Okay? We know this to be true because Josephus, a Jewish historian in the day of Jesus Christ, he wrote these words. He said, and I quote, um, pardon me, let me just find a place. Yes, the gold and the silver and the rest of that most precious furniture which the Jews had, and which the owners treasured up underground, was done to withstand the fortunes of war. That's how they kept their treasures underground. So imagine this. You are a farmer. You are a worker. And you are hired to work in this field. And the field belongs to the owner. And as you are toiling the ground, as you're tilling it, you discover something at the tip of your shovel. And what is it? Precious treasure. Now, it is obvious that the owner does not know it is there. And that's because, in all likelihood, the previous owner hid the treasure, and somehow, we, we don't know how, the land got sold to the current owner, and he has no idea of what he has in his field. Now, you, the worker, what do you do? In your joy, Jesus says, in your, you got smiles all over your face from ear to ear. You go and you sell everything you have. And then you buy the field. The second parable, just like it. Again, Jesus says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. So, Imagine you are a, a pearl dealer, and you are always, always, always looking for the most precious, most beautiful pearls. Now, in Jesus' day, the most precious item was not diamonds, because they didn't know how to extract that. They didn't have the technology. It was pearls instead. Pearls were so precious. It was the one of the most expensive, most valued treasures in those days. And it was really, really hard and dangerous harvesting pearls. Quick, quick. You would jump off from a boat with a rock around your waist tied to yourself. And you submerge all the way to the bottom of the sea. And you dig under the mud. Maybe if you're lucky, you may find one uh, uh, oyster. And you cut yourself loose, lose the weight, the stone, and you surface up. And then you, if you're lucky, if you're lucky, maybe, I don't know, one out of a hundred times, you may find a tiny little pearl at best. 
This was dangerous. They didn't have oxygen tanks. No, they didn't. They didn't have goggles. No, they didn't. And it was dangerous. There, there, there were sharks everywhere. You know, Jaws, you've seen the movie, right? Da, 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 da. So imagine you are a pearl dealer. And you're always looking for the precious, the most prized pearl. When you found it, what do you do? What do you do? You go home. You sell your house. You clean your bank accounts. You go, you dip into your savings and you, you break your children's piggy banks and you obtain that pearl. So, simple story, conveying one truth, one truth. So here's the theme and the goal. Are you ready? Would you please download the sermon outline by going to the, the, the tab on, on this website and then use the sermon notes. Here's the truth, which is the theme and the goal. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure, write that word, treasure, worth selling everything you treasure. One more time. What is heaven like? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure worth selling everything you treasure. What is a kingdom, by the way? Okay. Let's parse this. Kingdom is a domain or a territory that a king rules and reigns, period. That's it. That's what a kingdom is. Kingdom is a territory, land, country, or domain over which a king rules and reigns. So kingdom of heaven is the, the domain of the king, Jesus Christ, who rules and reigns. So therefore, is, isn't heaven a place? Yes, it is. It is a place. But it's more than that. It's more than that. It's the domain of the king, which is both heaven and earth. Got it? Over which the king rules and reigns. Every inch of the universe, therefore, is the domain that belongs to the king. And when you pray the Lord's Prayer, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. So that is the domain of Jesus' kingdom. Kingdom. And therefore, and therefore, whatever he rules, whatever he reigns, whatever he wills, comes to pass. In heaven, that is done perfectly. On earth, we, I, you, and in our will, in our disobedience, we contend against the rule and the reign of the king. And that's why, that's why, would you write these words? So therefore, the kingdom of heaven is both present and future, both now and not yet. Heaven starts right here. In the person of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven starts right here. It is also present and also future, therefore. It is also already now and not yet. So let's break down the theme and the goal into two parts. First, here's the first point. The kingdom of heaven is a treasure because, why is it a treasure? Because it gives what you most value. What you most value, you receive it, and the kingdom of heaven, Jesus Christ himself, gives that which you most value. What are they? You know what? I'm just going to spell out three things. Three things that you most value. In fact, this is what everyone, every human being on the face of the earth values. We need three things. Number one, you value identity. You value identity. And that is at the undercurrent of all your motivations. You ask yourself, do you not? How much am I worth? Huh? Does anyone treasure me? Huh? Am I important enough? Am I significant? Who am I? What is my worth? What's my identity at the core of all your endeavors and all your worries is the question of identity, who you are. And the kingdom of heaven gives you that identity. I'm going to stay to my best ability, stay within the book of Matthew. So here, look, Matthew 18, verses 2 to 4. Jesus called a little child to him 
and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Who can enter the kingdom of heaven? The little child. Why? Because a little child takes a lowly position. What does that mean? Is it because they are short? No, no, no. Don't be silly. What it means is this. Child cannot do anything for himself or herself. A child totally depends on the parents or people around them. And that's what Jesus is saying. It's about grace. It's a gift. All you need is to say to Jesus, Jesus Christ, my King, I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to show for. I have nothing with which I can build my own identity. I'm a sinner, and I am sinful, and I am sinful, and that's because why I sin, and I need your grace. I need your gift. That's it. And then when that grace comes to you, when that grace of heaven invades you, you know what you do? You receive it. Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus. You become a child of God. You are adopted into the family of God. My friends, look at me, look at me, look at me. Nothing will give you this value of identity except the grace of Jesus Christ from heaven above alone. Second thing you value is, you value what? Security. Write that word, security. Am I not true? Am I not right? Isn't it true? You always ask, do I have enough for tomorrow? Do I have enough for tomorrow? Will I be healthy tomorrow? You are always, always consumed by this sense need for security. Everyone has that need, and everyone must have that need met. I know I do. You know you do. Yes, it is an existential need of every human being. And Jesus Christ, the King of heaven, he offers that gift to you. Let me take it to Matthew 6, verse 25. Christ speaking, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Let's continue. Verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans, unbelievers, for the pagans run after all these things. And your Heavenly Father knows what you need them, that you need them. Would you read verse 33 together with me? But seek first his kingdom and his right. Hey, I said, let's read it together. I didn't hear you. Okay, ready? One, two, three. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Verse 34, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. See, Jesus Christ, the King, he will feed you, and he will clothe you, and he will take care of you. In, on this earth, when the kingdom of heaven comes in the person of Jesus Christ, now, present, it is here, and God the Father, through Jesus Christ, our King, is taking care of you. Not only does Jesus give you what you value, 
security in terms of your temporal needs on this earth, but there is a fundamentally more important security need that you have. It is your eternal security. It is by the grace of Jesus Christ alone that I will not torment for eternity in the fires of hell. I am a sinner, and I sin. There is no good in me. I am not saved. I have not become a child of God, and be not because I have obeyed His commandments. No, 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 no. Christ died. This is how God demonstrates His love for us in Romans chapter 5. Christ died while we were still sinners, before we did anything good, before we did any righteous act, before we obeyed God at all. That's when Christ died for us. And that's what is keeping me from the fires and the damnation of hell itself. I have security. Don't you value that? So, the kingdom of God is a treasure because it gives you identity, security, and lastly, you also value eternity. Write that word, eternity. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, listen to this. This is so existential. Chapter 3, verse 11. God has also set eternity in the human heart. In the human heart. You know what you need? You know what I need? You know what everyone needs? But only few of us thinks and talks about this, which is this. Does anything I do on this life matter? Is there meaning? Is there purpose in all this? We wake up, we eat, we work, we play, and we sleep. And we wake up, we eat, we work, we play, and we sleep. In all these activities, is there meaning and purpose? You know why you ask that question? The, the Lord says, that's because God said eternity in your very soul. And you, you will never be, you will never be content. You will always be a restless soul unless you find this rest in God alone because there is only, there is meaning and purpose. You were created by the Lord Jesus Christ. You were created for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you are being sustained by the King, Jesus Christ. And when you are in that community, in the communion, only then will you find, will you find that hole in your heart filled, that eternity. Because Jesus Christ is the King. Let's go to the second part. What's the theme again? The kingdom of heaven is a treasure worth selling everything for, right? Okay. Kingdom of, so the second point is, kingdom of heaven is worth selling everything you treasure. And by now you go, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. That sounds like works righteousness. I, I thought kingdom of heaven is by grace alone. And now we have to do something. Uh, you heard me right. Thank you for asking. Thank you for raising the question. Thank you for objecting. You are listening. Very good. Listen. Ephesians 2, you are saved by grace through faith. You are saved by what? Grace. Grace of Jesus Christ, our King in heaven. He is the person who gives, who offers grace. It's a gift. It's free. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Through faith. This is how you appropriate. This is how you take possession of kingdom of heaven. This is how you receive. When someone gives you a gift, if I'm giving you that 100, 105 carat diamond as a gift, you got to receive it. You better believe it. You got to extend your hand, say, yes, thank you. I, that's to appropriate the grace. So faith is that which receives grace. And therefore faith it's not a noun. Faith is a verb. It's an action. You got to receive it. You got to do something with the gift. You got it? Let me print more eloquently. Second point. Kingdom of heaven is worth selling everything you treasure. This is how you know if you have received the grace of Christ. If you are selling everything you treasure, that's how you know you have received the grace of kingdom of heaven. 
That makes sense? Let's go on. So therefore, three things. What do we have to sell? Well, the farmer sold everything. The merchant, the pearl merchant sold everything. Christ says, you sell everything. In the book of Matthew, time after time, Jesus Christ says things in the gospel account. Unless, unless you become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you give up everything for my sake, you're not worthy of me. So let me take you to the first point. You must give up your own identity. This is the opposite of the first point. You must give up. You must sell, as it were. You, you must relinquish. You, you must trade your own effort of making your own identity. That is to say, you stand before the holy and righteous King, Jesus Christ. I am not my own. I belong in the body, soul, and mind to my faithful Savior, my King, Jesus Christ. I am completely yours. I belong to you. You give up your right to yourself. When Jesus says, unless you pick up the cross, Unless you deny yourself, unless you follow me every day, you are not worthy of me. That's what he means. Have you received the uh, grace of Christ, our King? Then you will look like this. I deny myself. I don't belong to myself. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, my King. Because you gain your identity in him now. Second, you give up. Can you guess it? You give up your own. Say it security. You give up your own security, your, your attempts to build your own kingdom. Let me take you to Matthew 6. Most of the references are from the book of Matthew, and that's by design. Jesus' words. Victor and you, everyone, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Would you read verse 21 with me? I'll be listening. Let's read it together. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Verse 22. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy. Your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So many of us, if not all of us, we try to build our own security with the money that we think belongs to us. No, every penny in your possession belongs to King Jesus Christ. I owe, I owe nothing and neither do you. This is the biblical concept of stewardship. Everything belongs to the king. Everything belongs to the king. And the king has in, entrusted to you and me his money under our management, our care. And he wants to see if we put our security in the king, not in the money. You cannot serve both God and money. You cannot receive security from both God and money. You know that word money in Greek is actually mammon. It's money God, M meaning we look to money for things that only we can get from God, like security. And that's why God, God says, you cannot love me. You cannot serve me. You cannot trust me and love, trust, serve mammon, the money God. So how do you know? How do you know if you have received the grace of Christ? How do you know if, if you have entered the kingdom of heaven already here on this earth, in this life? You can tell it 
by how you manage, how you manage Jesus King, King Jesus money. Do you rejoice in the practices of first fruits? Or do you bring the leftovers to the Lord King? Do you bring with joy and gladness, bring tithe before the Lord, King Jesus Christ, at least 10% of income that he entrusted under your care, under your management? Hear me right. Please hear me correctly. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may the Lord make it clearly in your earshot. You are not, you don't enter the kingdom of heaven by giving first fruits and tithe. But everyone who has entered the kingdom of heaven, say by grace, and that grace is appropriated, taken possession of, in what kinds of activities? How you handle money. Give up your identi identity, give up your security, and third, give up your own eternity. Give up your own eternity. Matthew 13, verse 37, Jesus' words. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And you go, hang on, objection, your honor. This is so confusing. Jesus' message is about love, not about hate. So what does it, what does it mean? What's he talking about? If we don't hate your mom and daddy, you're not worthy of me. Un unless you hate your son and your... What, what's going... This is a rabbinic way of contrasting two different things. He's saying your love for the King Jesus Christ must be the number one priority. You love no one more than how much you love the King Jesus Christ. So when you compare, when you compare, when you compare the love that you have for the King Jesus and compare that with the love that you have for your parents, for your children, in comparison, it looks, it feels, it sounds like you hate them because you love Jesus so much with absolute devotion and dedication. You see, and therefore, life is not your own. The eternity in, in you, God said etern eternity in your heart, in your soul. It's about loving God, serving God, Jesus Christ, trusting Him, and following the commands of the King of Heaven with joyful and a sincere, glad heart. So let me wrap it up. Let's land a plane. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure worth selling everything you treasure. You receive what you value the most, identity, security, and eternity. And there's a cost. Grace is free, but there's a cost. Cost of following Jesus, cost of receiving through faith. Faith is not a noun, it's a verb. It's an action. It's an action. The devil believes there is God and he shudders. It's not an intellectual information in, in your head. Faith is, is an action. You give up your identity. You give up your own security. You give up your own eternity. And you treasure. Let me end with this. You know, that crown jewel the most precious treasure on earth? Think of it this way. King Jesus Christ in heaven above. He is the most priceless, priceless, most treasure, most important being. Right, 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 right? And what has he done? Let me take you to Hebrews 12. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God, hand of the throne of God. How did Christ overcome, endure the pain, the suffering, the scorn of the cross? He looked at the joy set before him. What is that joy? What was the joy that he was able to endure all the scorn? 
That's you. You are his joy. May I use the word treasure? You are his treasure. I am his treasure. The most treasured being in the entire universe. Treasured people like me, people like you. And he gave up everything, did he not? To claim you and me. He gave up everything. He gave up his identity. He gave up his security. He gave up his eternity. He became a man. God became man. He lived in poverty. He owned nothing in his life when he died. And he suffered eternal hell when he went down there in my place. And he says, Victor, I treasure you. And I've given up, given up everything for you. See, friends, that's why, that's why he is worthy of our worship. And that's why he is our treasure, the kingdom of heaven. Pray with me. Our king, King Jesus, the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords, we are humbled by your generous, ever-ending grace. Kingdom starts right here in the person of Jesus, we receive you actively by giving up everything, selling everything, and making you our most important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We imagine, we imagine what our life will be, how it will be different if, if, if my friends in this room and I, we lived every day as if heaven were here, because heaven is here. How would our families be changed? Our schools, our workplaces, our neighborhood, our city, they will be all transformed because we, the followers of Jesus Christ, we bring the values of your heaven. May Mosaic House Church be that place, the, the epicenter of your kingdom values. We love you. We serve you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, those of you who felt convicted by this me message, reach out to me. I get to pray with you and for you and help you to take your next step. You've been convicted by the Holy Spirit? Give me a call. Now, friends, so let us live out this, this heaven right here. And one of the ways we do that is with by bringing what belongs to the King Jesus. First fruits belongs to him. Tithe belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. So let's honor our King, will you? Click give online button and let's bring this treasure as an act of worship. Join me next week. Invite your friends who need to know, who need to know what heaven is like. Agreed? Receive the benediction. May the kingship of Jesus Christ rule and reign over you today, tomorrow, and forever. And God's paper said, Amen.